Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to Movie Talks. Uh, this is a new podcast that I started. I've already invited a couple of my street art friends, from uh, one from uh, the US and one from uh, Australia. So now I've, I've invited another friend of mine, uh, Karim from uh, Sarajevo, Bosnia. I have uh, the opportunity i have had the opportunity to work with kareem uh, in couple of festival twice festivals twice in uh, germany in wilhelmshaven and once in uh, dubai so i found uh, his work to be very you know interactive and playful so let's uh, welcome kareem and uh, we start with our discussion so thank you so much kareem for taking out time uh, for this you know podcast and uh, thank you thank you for joining me yeah thank you very much for inviting me it's uh, nice to see you yeah likewise likewise so kareem since i know you are a street artist and uh, you majorly work with uh, 3D illusions, uh, be it on the walls or on the floor. So why don't you like uh, tell us a little uh, in detail about yourself? What do you do? Where are you from? And uh, uh, what kind of education did you have? And uh, how did you like get into street art? And then from street art, how did you you know start uh, with 3D art? So did you like first? Your first uh, uh, street art to work was it a 3D piece or was it a normal 2D piece? So just tell us about uh, that. How did you start? Uh, yeah, my uh, yeah, my name is Karim, and I'm uh, from Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, I'm an artist uh, for my whole life. So since I was a kid, I was uh, always uh, drawing something. I was always inspired by, at that time, I was inspired by um, cartoon characters. So that's what I draw at that time. Cartoon characters, anime, manga, everything. So um, after that, I got into painting. <clears throat> when I applied to a high school, uh, art school, uh, but it's a high school for like uh, four years. So after elementary school, uh, when I applied that, I started to paint. So I was in the painting department. So at that school, I learned how to paint. Before, I didn't like to use paint at all. I always uh, like to use pencils, color pencils, and to draw. Mm -hmm. So in the high school, I used to uh, start painting. After that, I applied. Uh, uh, because uh, at that time I wanted to do to be uh, like a manga artist at that time, and because it was uh, very difficult to be <laughs> a manga artist from <laughs> Bosnia, I I started to uh, to question myself what I'm gonna do when I finish uh, high school. So I just uh, continued my art. Uh, art studies in the Academy of Fine Arts, where I got my bachelor degree in painting department. And after that, I got my also a master degree in the same department. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time I use, uh, because when you do a master uh, program, you, you can choose a team. So my team was a 3D anamorphic uh, street painting. So I did uh, I use that team because before I started uh, to do 3D street painting. So, and w when I started to do street art, uh, my first, uh, it, wa it wasn't 2D or mural or anything like that. It was a 3D anamorphic street art. And um, uh, how I started, it was, uh, it was not planned or anything. It was a coincidence. It was, a, I saw a poster like uh, in my academy, in the in the hall, in the in my university, so I applied to the festival, and uh, I did a little bit of research about the three D anamorphic street art, how how you do it, how do how to make it to look three D. So I did a, a little bit of research in the internet, and I tried in the in front of my house because I have a little space where I can practice. 
So I started doing a little 3D drawings with chalk. And uh, when the festival started, the festival was in my, uh, in my city in Sarajevo in 2000, that, this was in 2012. And uh, I applied as an individual uh, participant because you can uh, part- you can apply as a in in a team with a few of your colleagues. You can uh, do a, like a team project, or you can apply as an individual. And I applied as an individual, and I did a three D, and uh, it was a competition. So. I didn't expect, but I uh, took the first prize. So this was uh, unexpected, and uh, it was uh, I was really happy. Okay. After that, I, I I liked to do 3D street art, so I continued. And after that, I did a big uh, 3D also in front of my house, and I, I count that as my first 3D uh, street painting. There is also a U- YouTube video. And this was in 2000, summer of 2012. So I started with 3D anamorphic street painting, so painting on the floor. And after I started to do it, do it on the walls. And yeah. Great, very interesting. Okay, so uh, so a question comes to my mind that uh, you said that uh, 3D art uh, happened to you by accident. It was like nothing. Yes. It wasn't something that you planned. So uh when uh, when you were like uh, the first artwork that you must have created would have been an accident but after that uh, did you have like help from other 3d artists or uh, from other artists uh, in europe who were doing uh, 3d art or like did you do it uh, on your own from uh, internet finding tutorials or you know trying uh, things on your own so how did you actually learn uh, 3d art like the proper techniques like now we use a lot of techniques with some uh, there are some traditional techniques like you draw them with a uh, thread and piece of chalk and then there are more advanced techniques like uh, like we use uh, the graphs and now some some of the artists are even using projections so how did you like uh, come across uh, techniques different techniques and uh, how did you like learn 3d art to do it properly every time Uh, for the first time, I learned it uh, by doing, do, just doing it. So I, I tried to do it. Uh, I, I did a research on the internet how, how it, uh, but there wasn't, at that time, there wasn't uh, a lot of uh, tutorials or anything uh, how to do a 3D uh, piece. So I tried to, uh, I did a, a research uh, as many as I could, and I tried to do it in front of my house. So I Catch with chalk, but with uh, without greed or any preparation, like I do it today. So I just eyeball it, I, I sketch, and then I go to the viewpoint and I see it is it right, mm. and then that way. But today I, I use uh, I I prepare I use uh, Photoshop, mm. and I, I uh, because I at that time I also used to do 3D modeling. Mm. I do it also today, but and I use that uh, knowledge, what, what I basic knowledge, what I do mm. to do a 3D space. I uh, because in the 3D program you can uh, work with real uh, real life measurement mm. with meters, centimeters. So so I could uh, so I make a, like like for example when my painting is uh, 10 meters by four. Mm. I, I do it in a 3D program, like a plane, 10 meters by four, and I set up the viewpoint, the camera, mm. and I do the rendering of that uh, space. And I add a texture on that uh, plane of a grid, so square grid. Okay. And I do the render. When I do the render, I have a perfect uh, measurement, perfect. It's. Uh, I don't have to worry about it going to... Uh, look off because it's uh, precise. Mm. And uh, after that, I I apply I uh, open that render in a Photoshop program, and I do the sketch over the over the ten by four meters plane. Okay. And, and after that, I I just distort it the whole 
design with a plane on a 10 by 4 meters grid. So I have a perfect uh, design, perfect preparation. And before, before 3D, I used to measure like 10 meters by 4 in front of my house in the backyard. I measure 10 by 4 and I set up on the corners, I set up uh, like I put some bottles so it's um, visible and mm. I take a picture. So I have this format and I do the sketch over the, over the photograph of the photo. Okay. But today I use a 3D program and to prepare it. So it's more easy for me to do it than uh, the old way. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we are, there are many artists who are now using uh, technology. Even I use a software now to, you know, get my dimensions uh, as accurate as I can. So, yeah, the technology yeah. has been uh, really useful because the other day I was talking to Jenny McCracken from Australia. So, she was like telling me that uh, how she started and her was... Uh, most of her earlier works were very manual and uh, now since we are able to use technology so we can you know correct uh, we can create more uh, correct artworks uh, and save a lot of time so yeah uh, technology has helped everyone a lot so uh, yeah of course since uh, when I met you in Germany uh, back in 2016 and 17, uh, you talked about uh, you lived in uh, Germany uh, in your earlier years during the Bosnian War. So, till when did you live in Germany? When did you like move from Sarajevo to Germany and uh, from Germany back to Sarajevo? So how long was uh, your stay in Germany and uh, how was your like experience? Uh, away from your actual home uh, and growing up as a child in Germany. So how different was it from uh, now the kids, you know, the kids uh, who, who are uh, born in Sarajevo? So how different was your childhood from uh, their childhood living in a different country? Uh, yeah, I was... Uh... Uh, I was a uh, few months old when we moved to Germany. It was in 92, mm -hmm. uh, because I was born in 91. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Germany in 92, and uh, we lived there for six years until 98. Okay. And uh, 98, we, we came back to Sarajevo, because uh, before we moved to Germany, we lived in another city in Bosnia, where I was born, in Visegrad. And after the war, uh, when we lived in Germany for the six years, we built a house in Sarajevo. My father and my uh, grandfather was building a house mm -hmm. at that time, in mm -hmm. the meantime. And uh, so when the house was ready and the war was over, mm -hmm. uh, we, we moved back to Sarajevo. And uh, since uh, then, we lived here. And my childhood in Germany, because I was, uh, I remember a lot, of course. Uh, it wasn't, uh, I don't know, I wasn't, I didn't go to school at that because uh, I was uh, still too young. So I had a good uh, childhood. Um, the most of the time I was alone because uh, my parents had to work and my brother and sister went to school. So I was, uh, at home all the time, so <laughs> watching uh, cartoons and uh, drawing them. So I spend the time uh, in my memory. So uh, this is how I remember my childhood in Germany. So I went, uh, when I went back, I started to go to school. It was for me. It was all new. It mm. was uh, all. Uh, it wasn't difficult, but uh, for my brothers and sisters, uh, they, it was difficult because they speak German more than Bosnian, and then uh, it's a total uh, different uh, countries and culture. So for them, it was very difficult to uh, to adapt to the new life. For me, it was uh, it was not a problem because for me, it was OK. Yeah. Right. Very, very interesting. Uh, so since uh, you mentioned, uh, since I have noticed something about uh, your work, like I said earlier, that your works are very playful uh, most of the time. They are very, so 
like you painted uh, characters from Transformers or uh, painted uh, scenes from Jurassic Park as well with dinosaurs and then you have like uh, artworks based on jungle theme as well like where there are elephants or lions or tigers coming out or you know you can interact with so where do these ideas come from for you like uh, is it like from something from your childhood that you try and recreate and that's how people connect uh, with your art uh, because I have seen people uh, interacting a lot with your art and they really connect with it because uh, most of us uh, for most of them uh, the imagery is very uh, you know similar or what very you know uh, relatable so what's your thought behind creating every piece like uh, like you've created uh, pieces from Harry Potter as well, like depicting scenes from Harry Potter. And uh, so what is your thought behind uh, this kind of style of work? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, uh, when, when, I, when I lived in Germany in the six years, at that time, uh, the movie Jurassic Park was uh, very popular. So and at that time I liked uh, I like also today dinosaurs, but at that time I liked dinosaurs very much. Mm. I had a lot of toys, toys from uh, to dinosaur toys, mm. and also Transformers toys. And uh, at that time I watched that uh, movie and uh, Transformers animated series. So at that time I uh, used to draw them all the time, the dinosaurs you know, Transformers, cartoon characters, all, all mm -hmm. kinds of. So I, I was always um, uh, loved that kind of stuff and the team and the movies and, uh, you know, cartoon TV shows. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, I, I use that as a, as a team for my few uh, 3D street paintings because I like dinosaurs and T-Rex and everything. So I use that as a, as a team for my 3D street paintings, as you mentioned, mm. uh, because I'm uh, inspired by them. And also I did this a uh, few times, I did a Optimus Prime Transformers team, 3D street painting. Uh, these are all, um, these are all the things that I like and enjoy. Mm since I was a little kid. So yeah, I like that. And uh, also the Harry Potter uh, team, 3D. It's also something that I like. I like the movies and I like the team. Uh, so I always try to incorporate them into my uh, 3D street art because 3D street art is uh, interactive. Mm -hmm. And when you can combine this and uh, with some uh, kind of uh, very popular uh, characters or movies or anything. I think the people like that. And I had a very good uh, positive uh, reactions by the people because they all, they immediately recognize what, what's that and, uh, and they're happy. And then on the end, I'm also happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what the purpose is that artist uh, is also, you know, satisfied and happy at the end of the drawing and uh, so do the people, they enjoy, interact and take photos. So, yeah. uh, since we're talking about uh, people and uh, art, how did you, you know, how do you come up with your ideas? So, uh, it uh, brings me to the question that, uh, how did you like, uh, started going to the festivals, like, uh, which was, which was, which festival was your first one? Like, you've already mentioned that uh, the one that you uh, joined in Sarajevo, that was your first one. But uh, as we know that uh, there are more many festivals in Europe, uh, perhaps the most festivals, street art festivals, the 3D art festivals happen in Europe. So how did you like uh, go to your first festival? And uh, what was your experience like? Uh, and uh, 
so since now you've uh, been to almost uh, all the festivals that uh, uh, around the Euro, around Europe and uh, also in US you've been to Sarasota as well so how did it start for you and when did it start like what year was it when you started going to festivals and how did you and how do you like uh, do you pay for those festivals on your own or uh, do the festival organizers pay for it and how do you make a living uh, through you know street art or street art doing street art how do you make a living it's like two three questions that combine them so you can answer detail. yeah when i started in 2012 in sarajevo uh at that time i didn't know that there are uh, so many festivals around the world mm -hmm. also in europe uh, and in europe uh, in general it, uh, in europe i think there are um, uh, mostly festivals so at that time i didn't know and uh, after 2012, I started, I, I participated again in the local festival in Sarajevo as a, not as a competition, just only to paint. And in 2014, I saw one uh, 3D. And uh, in the description, it says Willem Safin Street Art Festival. And that's the first time when I heard uh, about a festival in general. Uh, in the world. So I did a research. I just typed on the internet uh, 3D street art festivals, mm -hmm. and uh, there was one website uh, where it says a lot of festivals in Europe, in the United States. And uh, in 2015, and I said to myself, okay, next year, so in 2015, I have to apply to every festival. So I did that. And uh, my first festival was in uh, outside my country. It was in uh, Croatia, in Split. The city is called Split. That's at the seaside. So there was a, like a 3D street art festival. I was invited there, and I uh, this was my first like uh, festival where I travel alone on my own, and. Uh, they, ju they just paid me for the materials, for the travel costs. They covered the travel costs, the hotel, the food, and uh, yeah. And uh, after that, I applied to a festival in Bloomberg. It's a small, small city, but uh, a big festival yeah. in Germany. And I applied to Willemshafen and also in Sarasota in the same year, in 2015. So I went there in Bloomberg in the Germany. And at that time, I didn't know that you can make some money of uh, 3D street art. So, so I made some money in the Bloomberg. And uh, I also won uh, the second prize. Mm. At that time, when you win a prize, you get some money. So, okay. so I had some money, got, and I was really happy. So. After that, I went to Wilhelmshaven and I made some money there. And uh, and then in Sarasota was for me for the first time because this was my beginning. Mm. It was really, uh, I went there, I spent like uh, 20 days. I was 20 days in Sarasota mm. because we are, uh, we worked on the, at that time, the largest 3D anamorphic street painting for mm. the Guinness World of Record. Yeah. So for me, it was a really big, uh, for me, big project, big opportunity, because uh, it's my first time I went to the United States and also to uh, be a part of this uh, big project. And uh, so always, so after this year, in 2016, 17, 18, 19, I always try to apply to many, many, many festivals. And every year I got more invited to the festivals than I, I had to apply. So I got more invitations. Yes. So, I, uh, so I have accepted everything what I could because uh, I saw there are opportunities so you can make money. And it's started to, to grow slowly at the time. And, uh, and every year is uh, better than the last one. So in 2019, I had uh, so many projects and so many opportunities. I was really ha uh, happy and grateful for that. This helped me a lot because uh, 
I because after that the the pandemic started, mm. so I had also planned a lot of projects and festivals and uh, street art events, but everything got ca- cancelled. So I didn't make uh, any money in 2012. In 2020. Mm. Um, like um, life as an artist is uh, hard enough, uh, no matter where you live, in what country. But with the pandemic, it's uh, <laughs> yes, it's really tough. Yes. So, so the projects in 2019 helped me a lot, and with all that money, I could uh, live through the two, uh, 2020 year. So this helped me a lot. And uh, thankful, uh, thankfully, uh, in this year, I had also a few projects. So I was really happy and uh, to participate and to be active more and to make some money. So, yeah. Okay, so since you mentioned uh, the pandemic, uh, that uh, the whole 2020, you like, most uh, we had the, no festivals at all throughout or any street art activity or uh, any art activity or gathering in general so i noticed that uh, you started uh, a daily drawing challenge on uh, instagram i was following uh, your daily drawing challenge that you you know every day you posted uh, a new image for 365 days so was it uh, a planned thing that you actually you know planned it before the pandemic started that in 2020 this is going to be an activity that you are going to do or uh, was it uh, because of the pandemic that you said you're going to stay in mostly and there won't be much opportunity to travel so why not take uh, this as an opportunity and grow as an artist and improve the skill and paint uh, as many images as possible and uh, what was the idea behind uh, those uh, paintings or sketches and uh, like uh, what what did you do with them uh, once uh, you finish them uh, do you have them like a collection of them because like 365 or 366 artworks are too much so do you like sell them or are you selling them or uh, what did you do with them yeah, I started this uh, like challenge uh, with my wife. She wanted to do it uh, herself in the December of 2019. She pointed out that she wants to do to paint uh, every day. So uh, I, and I, at that time, I didn't want to do it because it's uh, it's too much. <laughs> yeah. So and uh, it was. Uh, I think it was uh, 1st of January of 2020. And uh, at that time I decided, okay, I will do it too. So at that time uh, we both painted every day. And uh, behind all this, it's uh, not to to challenge myself or it's just to push myself to paint more traditionally because my background is a painter. Mm. I'm a ac- academic painter. So, before I, I do all these kinds of street art projects and uh, I left the traditional painting uh, behind me. I just, uh, so I, I really, uh, I really missed to paint just on a, in a sketchbook or on a canvas. So this was the idea. So we both painted like, uh, try to paint every day. And we, this was before the pandemic, so I didn't know, uh, nobody knows. Yeah. And uh, when the pandemic came, it was a great uh, time to spend, uh, it was a great way to spend my time at home. So just to paint. So I, we painted both mm. for the whole year. So we finished that and um, I learned a lot. Uh, through this painting, I this was also an opportunity for me to paint uh, every every theme, every subject what I always wanted to paint. So this was a great opportunity for me. And um, yes, and today I have this was all in uh, we all painted in sketchbooks. It's a small sketchbook, mm. and we. Um, 
I have now 14 sketchbooks full of paintings. So what I did uh, with them, I just, <laughs> they are stored. Uh, I didn't do anything with them. So uh, I had few, uh, like a few people reached out to me to sell some of the paintings, but I didn't want to. I, I just want to keep them in the sketchbook. So yeah, they are, they are stored and uh, maybe, maybe I, will, I will do it uh, another time. <laughs> Right, because I really enjoyed, uh, you know, seeing all those uh, artworks that you were sharing last year, and uh, certainly there were so many themes that that were there, like some from the movies, some from some. There were some, uh, you know, construction-related vehicles, some old cars, vintage cars, and everything. So it was really enjoyable, and uh, I thought it was a very interesting idea. So. <coughs> Uh, so say it, I have a connecting question. So do uh, what do you still uh, like? Uh, since you are a fine artist by education and you have masters in fine art, so uh, and you spend a lot of your time uh, painting on the streets or do murals or street art. So do you like uh, practice traditional art as well, like? Uh, Fine artists generally, you know, display their works in galleries and do a lot of gallery shows around the world. So, do you like uh, do that as well, or, or uh, like uh, you just reliant on uh, street art that you do not practice the traditional fine art, the gallery show kind of art? Uh, yes, I I do. Uh... I had some uh, group exhibitions uh, a few years ago mm. uh, for because I'm a member of of uh, uh, how do you say it in English? I think uh, Association of Artists of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So yeah. because I'm a member, I have the opportunity to participate on group big group exhibitions in Sarajevo mm. and this. Uh, exhibitions are a few times in a year and the next one is in November so I applied to be a member so I can push myself to paint more on the canvases also this was before the challenge and before the pandemic so uh, so so uh, because uh, because there is an exhibition so I have uh, I have a goal so to paint traditional, so I can uh, put it on a gallery, mm. hang it on a gallery. So yeah, I had a few group exhibitions. I didn't have a solo exhibition yet, but uh, I, I hope I, in the future I will. In sure. Yeah, and uh, yes, but with street art, I really like to be outside and to paint more than uh, inside on a canvas. Mm. Uh, I like more to paint uh, murals and uh, street art projects more than uh, fine art. Uh, and that's why I, I did this challenge where I painted the whole year. So I, I kind of missed that, missed that part uh, to be a traditional fine artist. And that's why I did this challenge uh, to push myself to paint more traditionally to, because this is my background, the street art came after. And today, I, I really like more to be uh, outside and to paint on walls and do these kind of street art projects, yes. And I also rely more on them because I have more opportunities to be an artist and live from my art with these uh, street art events, festivals, private projects, commissions, yeah. Right. So, uh, what kind of uh, works uh, do you produce on, uh, you know, canvas? Uh, what kind of works do you produce? Like, uh, are they 3D artworks or uh, they're like more traditional subject subjects? Like we've seen uh, many artists, uh, not many, but a uh, few of uh, 3D artists or 3D street artists, they are like uh, converting their art into canvas pieces or uh, painting on wood panels like uh, Leon Kier does that a lot he's had uh, shows as well uh, around the world now and uh, Yuan Andres Vera is also trying that I also uh, you know tries uh, 
create works on canvas, illusion-based work on canvas, because we do not have uh, much uh, street art opportunity here in Pakistan. So I'm trying to you know push uh, this 3D art or uh, uh, mixing it uh, on canvas and you know bringing it to the gallery space so that people get more used to street art and they know that it's another art form as well. So what kind of works do you produce on canvas and uh, are they 3D or just traditional paintings? Yeah, when I did this master program, because my theme was 3D, um, 3D street art, I did uh, my 3D street paintings on canvases without frame or anything, just a, a blank canvas. And I did this uh, 3D street art. But uh, today when I paint uh, traditionally, I, I try to do something 3D related, but I, 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 uh, I didn't enjoy it that much because I enjoyed more to do it on balls or on the, on the pavement. Mm. So I, I did some uh, traditional themes, uh, Bosnian kind of themes. So Bosnian subjects, like um, for example, I did this um, very famous Bosnian tram. It's a yellow old tram. So it's a... Um, it's a subject that people are um, recognize it. So, and I, I, and because of that, I, I, uh, I was successful to sell this painting, and also other subjects. In uh, when you come to Sarajevo, you can see all these uh, uh, historical uh, subjects. So I try to paint them. And I also did a few years ago something uh, more, uh, nothing, mm, uh, not not uh, traditional theme, but something uh, creativity, some design, some um, something from my head, in my imagination, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And I also did the exhibition with with these paintings. And, uh, but today I, I used to, uh, I try to paint uh, traditional uh, subjects in my, my, from my country. So, yes, yeah. Okay, okay. since uh, uh, you, since you also, you like uh, do works on canvas as you've told, just told. So where do you uh, see this uh, 3D art uh, going or street art evolving in future? Like you work with uh, artists from different backgrounds and different countries around the world and in different countries as well. You go to different, travel to different countries and uh, so where do you see this uh, street art or 3D art going in the future, especially with uh, all the technology we have now. Uh, we have like uh, a lot of people using uh, augmented reality as well. I used it last year as well in one of my uh, two, uh, two, three pieces of mine. So where do you see it uh, going in the future? As uh, even now, uh, there are museums opening in uh, Europe as well as in uh, uh, US. You've been, uh, you've also painted uh, in, I think, one in Sarajevo as well, for one museum in Sarajevo, and uh, you've painted in, uh, in the US as well for a, for a 3D art museum. So where do you see it, uh, the art heading in the future, and how was your experience, uh, uh, you know, at, in painting at the museums? Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's a good question because uh, I really don't know how uh, what's going to happen with uh, 3D street art in the future. But uh, I know that it, it's um, developing because in the past 10 years, it, uh, the 3D street art is really uh, grown because today we had um, 10 years ago, maybe uh, it wasn't that popular, I think. Maybe, maybe in the uh, US, but in Europe, I don't think so. But today, a, a lot of people know about 3D and it's developing and it's growing. Today, we, like you mentioned, we have uh, a lot of 3D museums. Mm. Uh, this is, uh, this is a really good uh, 
how do you say it, like accomplishment. We have like a 3D museum where you can, uh, you know, people come in and take pictures and they post them on the uh, social network. And, uh, but I really don't know how it's gonna, uh, what's gonna happen after. Uh, also, we have uh, like uh, commercials where they uh, use as a 3D anamorphic to, you know, to advertise their brand or anything like uh, cars. There is like a commercial about uh, cars. I, I, I can't remember what uh, brand it was, but I, uh, I know there is one. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard question. I, uh, I hope that, uh, in, I think in the future, there will be a lot of uh, more 3D artists. I think, uh, I think more, uh, a lot of street artists like mural artists, maybe a lot of them gonna try to incorporate this uh, 3D anamorphic perspective in their pieces also. Mm. Uh, it's interesting because uh, 3D street does it can be interactive, so that's a really good uh, point. So with that, uh, it's a powerful, uh, powerful uh, tool to say that way. So you can incorporate it in a lot of things. So yeah, a lot of people use it 3D street art in the to advertise and uh, to make the world more fun. <laughs> Right, right. Very interesting. So, uh, since uh, I remember that uh, in Germany we talked about, uh, you told me that uh, you were working on, uh, you wanted to uh, work on a game or develop a game. You had some idea regarding a video game uh, development. So, are you like still working on it? Or, uh, you've given up or uh, because you mentioned that you're uh, you're building a computer system as well so that where you can uh, do all the design work related to the gameplay so are you still working on it and uh, if you're working on it what is the theme of the game and where do you when do you you know see it uh, coming out or obviously you'd have to you know reach out to some uh, big companies so they can launch the game. So what's the plan? Are you, is it still going on? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, because uh, I worked with my cousin. You met him, Timur? Yes, Timur. We yes. Met him. Yeah. So we both like 3D, like 3D modeling and also games. And because of that, I, I like to uh, to combine 3D modeling into something interactive, and that's a video game. And he also liked to do some kind of video game, so we both decided to do a game together. Mm. And this was in 2017, yeah. This was in 2017. Yes. And uh, at that time, we, we had a, like a 3D uh, third-person game, adventure game. And we started, we did a lot. We worked on the few months. And uh, because I didn't have much time because all of these uh, street art projects and uh, I, I slowly kind of left it behind me. I did a lot. I did, uh, I spent a lot of time designing and uh, doing digital concept art and modeling, mm -hmm. 3D modeling. I spent a lot of time, I have, uh, a lot of assets, 3D assets made for this game. But on the end, we kind of stopped working on it. And uh, he started to work on another game at the moment. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's going to look great. Uh, so I just, uh, okay. I just uh, left it behind me and uh, but I still do some 3D modelings and stuff, and I always had had, it, had this in mind to do something interactive using the Unreal Engine program where you can uh, make this game. So maybe in the future I will do this uh, project, this uh, little project, uh, just for me, nothing to sell or anything, only for me. Okay. So maybe in the future, yeah, when I when I have more time and uh, yeah. 
right so where do you like uh, see your art uh, going in the future your personal art like do you want to continue doing uh, the path that path you are on like 3d street art or street art festivals and commissions and murals mural commissions and festivals so are you planning to do it uh, even more like more and more uh, opportunities uh, street art related opportunities or like you want to do more uh, traditional painting work where do you see yourself like uh, your art going and yourself going like you want to like you're going to stay in sarajevo so what's the art scene like in sarajevo are there uh, opportunities for artists in sarajevo or in bosnia in general like Sarajevo is a city, but in Bosnia in general, are there more opportunities for artists or like in future you will be moving to some other country in Europe where there are more opportunities. Uh, where do you see yourself uh, doing any art going in the future? Yeah, I see myself to do uh, in the future more murals. So nothing uh, 3D anamorphic related. I really enjoy to do just uh, 2D murals. So in the last couple of years, I really tried to uh, move uh, to this uh, street art uh, kind. So in the future, I will try to more do more murals, but I will not stop doing 3D street art because, um, because in this 3D street art, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, a lot of events, a lot of street art festivals, also private commissions, and where I can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And because I'm an artist and I live from uh, from my art, so that's uh, I can't uh, decline such uh, projects like this. So I will continue to do 3D street art, of course. But for myself, uh, for me, free, uh, I will do a lot of murals uh, in my city. Uh, and hopefully in the future I will be invited to do murals in some uh, private commissions or other festivals. And uh, the street art scene in Bosnia is, uh, yeah, today we have, uh, we have one big festival in a city called Mostar. Uh, this year it was the 10th edition. So we have a big street art mural festival there and uh, I was part a few times part of that festival and I really liked it and uh, in Sarajevo we had one festival in uh, in July this year it was the first edition mm -hmm. so I was also a part of that I did uh, one mural and uh, it was a really great experience to paint uh, in my city because I don't paint uh, a lot of in my country Hmm. I would like in the future to have more opportunities to paint also in my country, in my city, or in the whole country. And, and this project was a really great uh, opportunity, uh, this festival. So, uh, and I, I, I will stay in Sarajevo. I mean, I will live, I will still live here. I don't have a... Uh, uh, how they say it? Uh, I don't have the will to uh, to move out to another country. For me, it's uh, Sarajevo. It's my uh, it's my city. I, I love to live here. I have a I have a good life here, and uh, I, I can't change it for anything else for another country or city. Uh, yeah, so in the future, I will try to do more murals. And uh, I hopefully I will did a few murals uh, still in this year before the winter comes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I try to document everything, to make videos, and to post them uh, on YouTube, and uh, make more noise, to make more, uh, to reach a wide audience. Mm -hmm. That's my plan. So. We see uh, what will happen. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, I've been following uh, your videos and uh, your updates on YouTube as well. So, like, I have like.
like a lot of content coming on YouTube. You you've already recorded stuff for YouTube. Like you moved, you've been to events this year, and uh, so is it already coming or uh, you're planning to you know make it a more regular thing now? So what is it? Yeah, I started uh, one year ago. I decided to to make videos. I I I had make videos uh, like seven uh, eight years ago, and I stopped. Mm. At that time, when I started, I really enjoyed to make videos, and uh, and I stopped for seven uh, or eight years. I can remember. And then I just and I in that time in the meantime in the seven years I had to uh, make a lot of videos I made uh, I filmed a lot of uh, art videos but I never uh, edit them edit them and post them so I decided one year ago to because I see their uh, opportunity uh, to because I love make videos and I love to make art and it's very difficult to. Uh, to do both. So when you go outside, when you do street art or mural or anything else, and it's real difficult to also to film that and to think think about filming and painting. It's very difficult. So sometimes I, I just decide, no, I don't want to film it. But uh, after I get a little bit sad uh, why I didn't paint it, why I didn't uh, film it, so I decided to make art videos from uh, last year, mm -hmm. year ago, and uh, but I didn't post them uh, consistently. So that's a problem uh, because I have other uh, projects, and it also depends on your mood and your. Uh, because I don't want to make a, to edit one video when I uh, when I'm not in the mood. Uh, I mean, when you're not feeling it. So I, I want to make a video when I'm really uh, happy. Okay, I, I, I want to do a video now. So I will try to make more, uh, to post more. I'm working at the moment uh, on another one. This is the mural uh, which I did in, uh, in my city in Sarajevo in July for the festival. So this will be my next uh, art video. And after that, there will be still more and more and more videos. Hopefully, I will uh, have the will to continue. Inshallah, inshallah. This, uh, this inshallah. brings me to the, uh, my very last question. You've been uh, very generous with time, and we've, we've been speaking for a while now. So uh, my very last question to you, since uh, you've had uh, uh, proper training as an artist, you been to an art school and you find your bachelor's and then your master's in fine art. So, uh, what advice would you give uh, to anyone, uh, new artist, be it any part of the world, be it in uh, the US, Asia, or Europe, anywhere in the world? So, uh, as uh, obviously we can see that uh, the training that you got at the art school. Uh, uh, you know, made your work stand out. So, what will your advice be to the new artists or uh, uh, people who want to try 3D art or street art in general? So should they acquire art skill uh, skills related to art before trying out uh, 3D art or even street art in general or mural painting in general? Or uh, they can uh, like uh, this is something they can learn on uh, like on the job. Like they can start painting murals and they will start learning. So what will your advice be like for the new people? Yeah, uh, as an artist, as an uh, who finished like art school and uh, bachelor and a master, it's a very difficult, uh, I think for every artist is, uh, okay, so I finished school, what, 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 uh, what can I do now? What's the next step? What's the next uh, goal? So it's really difficult to live from art. Uh, that's uh, in, uh, no matter in what country you live. And uh, for uh, for new 3D street artists or mural artists, there's a lot of opportunities because we have a lot of festivals, a lot of uh, events, and where you can apply. Mm. So there's a lot of opportunity for for that kind of art. But if you want to sell art like paintings, it's very difficult. 
and uh, it's very difficult but thankfully we have uh, like social media instagram facebook mm. youtube where you can share it with a wider audience uh, in the world so that's a, a, a powerful tool which you can use you build your audience and uh, and someday you will uh, you know sell one painting and then you will sell another painting and a third and a fourth and you will develop this uh, routine. For 3D street art, I will, uh, uh, yeah, my advice would be, you know, just to, uh, you know, just to, to do it, to try it. If you have like a, like a space where you can practice, like a backyard in front of your house and uh, you can use that, that this is what I used in 2012. So I learned that uh, doing that. And uh, after that, I fell in love with this kind of art. So I started to continue. And today we have a lot of uh, festivals and so you can apply on them. And, uh, and also, of course, we have a lot of uh, tutorials and uh, on YouTube and on another social platforms where you can learn it. Today we have, it's, uh, I think it's a golden age of learning. So there's a lot of on the internet. So use that as a, you know, as a starting point and then you just do it. Just try it and uh, don't, uh, don't forget your goal. Mm. Uh, be consistent and don't think about money on the, on the, on the beginning, on the, you know, money will come. You know, hopefully, inshallah. Right. So thank you very much, Karim, for you know taking out uh, your time and uh, you know joining me for this discussion. I really uh, enjoyed uh, you know listening to you, talking to you, and hearing your perspective on things and how your uh, journey has been uh, till now into you know street art. And mm -hmm. my prayers are with you that may Allah you know. Uh, help you achieve your uh, goals and dreams that you set uh, for you and your family and for every uh, everyone in general that was trying and uh, so thank you very much Kareem. Uh if you want to say anything uh, you're most welcome I really enjoy talking to you yes thank you thank you very much Obeid uh, for this invitation to your uh, podcast I really enjoyed talking to you answering your questions and I also follow you your podcasts and I really enjoy them watching and I I wish you uh, success and I hopefully uh, I see you soon <laughs> yeah inshallah see you soon on some kind of yeah inshallah so thank you Kareem uh, we'll uh, hopefully you know some uh, other time we'll try and uh, do a part two of this maybe some earlier next year or some other time or maybe uh, we get, uh, get an opportunity to meet sometime next year and we'll you know do it one-on-one -on -one. so who knows so yeah. inshallah so thank you very thank yeah. you for your time thank you very much thank you okay.